up. I can't believe it's nearly a year now since I was last at the uh, Motorcycle Live show at the NEC in Birmingham. Uh, this year's absolutely flown past, and of course, we've got the Motorcycle Live 2023 coming up in just, what, two or three weeks. Now, as you know, if you follow this channel on a regular basis, generally what I try to do is acquire a new bike for uh, each year that the channel's running in an attempt to keep things fresh and um, provide a bit of variety. Now, this year, um, I didn't buy a new bike in. I got the Classic 350 last year, and then of course I had that foot injury, which meant I couldn't really ride for most of the year. And then this year's been a complete washout weather-wise. And then just as the weather cleared up, of course, um, the 350 had to be taken off, off the road with that problem with the uh, instrument panel and I've only just got it back. Now I do feel that there's still a lot more I want to do with the Classic 350. I've got boxes of parts from Hitchcock's motorcycles waiting to go on it for review. But I've covered uh, all aspects of servicing and I've also covered most of the genuine Royal Enfield accessories. So although as I say there is more to do with the Classic 350 I feel as though I do need to move on with something new for next year. And of course, this is the time of year where I start to put some thought into, uh, you know, what is going to be the next bike on the channel. Which has left me in a bit of a quandary, really. Um, what Royal Enfield's turning out at the moment, no disrespect to them because I love the brand, is pretty much more of the same. The Hunter 350 and the Meteor are obviously very similar bank bikes to the classic 350 so there's not much point going down the route of either of those two models i did contemplate the super meteor 650 in fact you know it is still in the running at the moment we've got the prospect of an interceptor scrambler or something along those lines as well which appeals to me although there's nothing official on that as yet so you know maybe it's just a bit of a moot point and of course we've got the new water-cooled Himalayan 350 which I think is pretty much a dead set for release next month. But I'm not sure that it really fits within the remit of this channel. Modern classics are my thing, uh, that's what this channel's known for, and it's not a modern classic. Although, strangely, I've noticed that some journalists are referring to it as a modern classic. The new Bullet's been released, but of course that is an extremely similar motorcycle to the Classic 350, so there's not much point going there. So, what to do? And this is where you come in really, because I need a little bit of help making my mind up. And it's important to get your views on this because you are the people that are going to be watching the content that I release next year. Now obviously there's still going to be a lot of Royal Enfield content, that's not going away, because I have a garage full of them. So the question is this, do I leave it out and not get a new bike next year and just continue with the 350 until we get to the end of it? Or do I go for the Super Meteor 650, which is a bike that appeals to me, even though it's a cruiser and cruiser's not my thing. Or, if it's possible, do I take on the new 450 Himalayan? Now, as I've just said, it's not a modern classic and it doesn't really fit within the remit of this channel, but maybe it is time for something a bit fresh and new. There is enough information out there now to know that this is a fantastic motorcycle. Is that what you would like to see? Bearing in mind this would be a, a long-term project, you know, it's not just going to be a, a couple of videos and a review and then that's it. Or, do we go for something else completely different? Now, prior to the NEC last year, BSA Motorcycles, uh, the new Gold Star, was something very much on my radar. I was quite excited about the brand until I saw them in the flesh at the show. Um, basically, I came away quite unimpressed. Now, the problem at the time was they didn't have any running motorcycles. None had been sold. They didn't have anything in production at that time. 
And from what I could gather, the bikes on display were just mock-ups, they weren't the real thing. One of the issues that I had is that this is a brand new company using an old name. BSA, uh, they've been out of business for almost 50 years until they came along and bought the name. Nothing wrong with that, plenty of other manufacturers have done the same thing, but I, I just came away from the show feeling a bit uneasy about the brand at the time. But that is, as they say, ancient history now. Um, now, the models sort of started to trickle through to the UK market late last year. I think it's fair to say that they had some teething troubles initially, which, from what I can gather, have all now been ironed out. And so, a few weeks ago, I started to do um, a bit of research into these bikes in earnest. Now, I've spoken to individuals that own these bikes. Also, I've spoken to dealerships that sell them. One of my main fears or concerns, uh, especially with it being a new, unproven company, were, you know, what warranty claims were going to be like. And I'm pleased to say that from what I can gather, Lucas Distributions, the UK handler for this brand, are really on the ball with most warranty claims being sorted out within a matter of days. The dealerships that I've spoken to have been very impressed so far. Now, the other thing that helped with my sort of decision to put the essay back on my radar is Hitchcock's motorcycles. A chance conversation with Dan at Hitchcock's back at the beginning of August revealed to me that they've actually bought a BSA Gold Star in for development of accessories and parts. I've kept in touch with Dan about this project and again they seem very impressed with these motorcycles. To the point where they've decided to push ahead with the development of some parts I can't go into much detail because it's all a little bit hush-hush at the moment. But I think it's fair to say that we can see the same sort of refinements that we've seen Hitchcock's produce for the Royal Enfield brand over the years. Now, you might have a different opinion, but in my book, if a company like Hitchcock's Motorcycles is willing to get involved with this brand, it makes it much more desirable in my eyes. I trust their judgement. So... I've given you some options there, the choice is yours and I'll eagerly wait you know, your response as to what new motorcycle you'd like to see appearing on the channel next year. I value your opinions. Just leave me a comment in the comments section down below and I'll look forward to reading what your thoughts are. Right, once again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and my other videos and in doing so helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. I'd also appreciate it if you would leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. We're not far off the 110,000 subscribers mark now. Now, if you'd like to support the channel in other ways, you can do so through my Patreon page or via the Super Thanks button down below. Any assistance is greatly appreciated. Right, I'm going to be back next week. Hopefully, I'll be firing on all cylinders by then. So until then, please ride safely and I'll see you soon.